hey, you know what's coming. All the colors falling out of the trees and um, it's going to get cold outside. So you might be cooped up. Wait a minute, you've already been cooped up. Okay, you're going to be cooped up a little more because winter's coming. I want to give you something new to think about with your dulcimer. Like what, what might be your next thing to work on? Something a little different. You know, already use the instrument you have. Maybe set it up a little different. Try something new. Check this out. Maybe four string is your next thing. If you look closely at these strings, they are spaced out equally for the most part. I need to have a new saddle and bridge done just to get it exact. It's tuned like a regular three string dulcimer with a double melody, which I guess makes it a four string, but you end up with D, A, D, D. So on some dulcimers, like David Schnaufer used to have a double melody and then that middle string. So this just spaces those, spaces those four out equally. D, A, D, D, same tuning, different string arrangement. Um, you know, a lot of your dulcimers are already set up to do this. Like McSpadden's, for instance, already set up. It was a big thing in the 80s. People like Lorraine Lee Hammond, um, Bonnie Carroll, Leo Kretzner, Jerry Rockwell. And there's a long list of four-string players. David Schnaufer on his dulcimer player deluxe. That's where he used it a lot. He would capo at four. And he used it for his slow stuff. On his, you know, for his strummy stuff, he would go back to the regular string arrangement, but then he'd tell a story on stage, reposition the strings, and then he's into this four string stuff. So why should you check this out? Well, you've been sitting at home and maybe you're getting a little tired of what you've been working on and, and you're ready for something new. Uh, there's some wonderful stuff. So I just want to take you on a tour of, of, of some of it. First of all, if you just wanted to play melody on your melody string, and use the other three strings for drones, it's pretty cool. Just a little fuller than what you're used to. And you know, you gotta think about the right hand. You could use like a two finger, one thumb approach. I'll call it a three finger approach. Every once in a while I do a brush, like that. Sometimes I use a four finger approach with this, I allow the ring finger into the game. So I'm with David, I mean, I'm not crazy about strumming four string, although it can sound very nice, it's just, I, I like the three string for strumming, sometimes double the melody, but the four string is so nice for this slow stuff. These two strings, I call them, uh, well, they're both melody strings, so I call this one the inside melody string, the one that's closest to the middle of the fingerboard, and this one is the outside melody string, the one closest to my belly. One neat thing you can do with this is get pretty simple harmonies by just separating, playing two notes, uh, a two note spread following the scale you're in. I mean, it's kind of two frets, but it isn't always. You gotta respect the scale you're in. That's beautiful. You can also space them out uh, either two apart or three apart. So that's, that's a lot of fun. Um, Schnaufer used to do what he called harp scales, and I think he probably got this from Chet Atkins. So instead of just playing a scale on one string, it's hard to do. 
<laughs> you what you do is you alternate. You go back and forth, and you always leave the previous note ringing, well, or much of the time. So it tends to work really well in groups of three. So listen to that with the other strings. And it creates a little bit of a blur, um, a smear, if you like. But I think it's uh, it's great uh, to create just a little bit of legato. And sometimes it's a little dissonant, but if it was good enough for Chet Atkins in the 1950s, I think we can get some of it in there. I try to do four fingers. It's a little harder to do. <laughs> so if I put all that together, you know. Something like that. Schnaufer used to do this cool thing with his right hand. The Look at this. So you start by going away from you on the melody string that's closest to you with the thumb, but you rest on the inside melody string. Then you pluck that with the thumb and rest on the middle string. Now the index finger comes at you, starting with the bass, resting on the middle, and then you pluck the middle, resting on the inside melody. These are called rest strokes. Now, of course, you could just use four digits, or you could do that with, you could do that with three. But there's something cool about this method because it rhythmically is muting one string, which kind of highlights another. So, um... So as far as some of the chord shapes go, um, it's really neat because although they're a little different than what you're used to, they're heavily <laughs> related to what you're used to. So one thing is, let's look at just the bass, middle, and inside melody, just these three adjacent strings to remind you of the chord shapes. You got L, slant, extended. And this is a good point. Sometimes I just play on these three strings and I just don't worry about this one. You know, it might ring sometimes, but a lot of times I'm touching it with another part of my finger lightly so it can't make a sound. So you can actually go into three string playing on the bass, middle, and inside melody. But then all of a sudden, dip into the four string stuff. But let's look at the L shape. I'll do a three, three, five, pretending I'm just on three string here. Of course you can do a thumb method. The thumb and the non-thumb fingerings both have advantages and disadvantages, but they both work pretty well for this four string stuff. Um, how can you convert a three string shape to a four string shape? Well, you take this three, three, five, three adjacent strings, and you take that five that's on the inside melody, and you just put it over here on the outside melody, and you make the inside melody match the bass. And that's going to be for all three shapes. That's one approach. So you take the shape you know, a three, three, five, three on the bass, three on the middle, five on the inside melody. Just move this five to the outside melody, the one near your belly, and then change the inside melody from the five it was 
make it match whatever the bass is doing. So a three, three, five becomes a three, 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 five. And David would bar with his ring finger. You gotta build up that. You gotta get more callus. You gotta get more stretch, more strength. But it works for the thumb player like this. Middle ring, pinky, three, three, three. Middle ring, pinky. Three, three, three. So you got a three, 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 five. Now this right here is fun to move around. What I like to do is move the thumb around. Let's try this uh, two, two, four would become a two, 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 four. Watch how I just keep the twos down, but I move the thumb around. Now do the same thing on one. One, one, three. Becomes a one, 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 three. And then I just move that thumb around. And when I'm using the non-thumb fingering, same stuff. You get some wonderful, wonderful sounds doing that right there. One thing I love to do is like a one, 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 two. I'm calling these numbers bass string first. One, 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 two. It's a sus two chord. Three, 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 four. Four, 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 five. So look, I'm just gonna move those around. go back to um, converting a three string shape to a four string shape. If you take a three note, three string shape, like the slant, you'd get a two, three, four. Well, the same process works for this shape. Whatever's on the inside melody, move it over to the next melody string, the one closest to you, and then make the inside melody match whatever the bass is doing. That is the formula. You take a two, three, four, whatever the bass is doing, that's gonna go on the inside melody, and what was on the inside melody gets moved to the outside. So a two, three, four becomes a two, three, two, four. Now some of you watching this, you may not even need to worry about these fancier shapes for a while, but they, they're pretty easy on the hand, like for a thumb player. The one, two, three becomes a one, two, one, three. The O, oh, one, two becomes an O, oh, one, O, oh, two. You just make sure the inside melody matches the bass. And whatever was on the inside melody gets moved over to the outside melody, the one nearest to you. And sometimes what happens on this is the bass string is wound and you get those string noises. That kind of scrapey sound. So sometimes what I do when I change shapes, I'll actually, I'll push on these three plain steel strings. Cause you're not gonna get any of that sound cause they're not wrapped. So you don't get that quick, quick, quick sound. But what I do is I let up on what the bass string. So, um, That's a little tricky and I need to get better at that. But um, another thing, the two, three, four becomes a two, three, two, four, and then I can just move the thumb around. I just put 
put my pinky down here. But you don't need to do that because you got that note on the inside melody. Move it up. And this is exactly what you could do for your extended slam. But let's not go there yet. Let's look at the non-thumb fingering. So two, three, four becomes a uh, two, three, two, four. And you could use your ring finger here. Sometimes I do this one, but usually it's this one. Wrong chord, but pretty. <laughs> These non-thumb fingerings will not work for you unless you put in some serious time. You can't even judge them fairly until you um, spend some time getting used to them. So watch. Let's do a little review here. A one-one-three. Uh, just doing the bass, middle, and inside melody as if they're the only three strings. The only strings. One-one-three. Move the three over to the outside melody and then whatever's on the bass gets put on the inside melody. So this becomes this. The slant works the same way. You take a one, two, three. I move this three over to the outside melody and whatever's on the bass gets put on the inside melody. So you go from this to this. And uh, thumb fingering on this one is definitely a little easier. I guess I'll have to admit that. Um, I do use the pinky a lot though, and I think that's better. Yeah. So I was using the ring finger there, but I do think I've graduated to the pinky. That takes some time. That's actually pretty easy. Uh, even though. Even though. I'm getting a little bit of a dud there. It's just... You know, for me, I'm, I'm, I need a change. That's why I'm delving back into this. And I, I guess every few years I get into it a little bit. But um, the, the, the extended slant works the same way. You take this one, two, four, put the four on the outside melody, match the inside melody to whatever the bass is doing. You get a one, two, one, four. So a one, two, four for the three string becomes a one, two, one, four for the four string. And I, I you know, I'll tell you what, I'm, uh, I, I know I'm going to be using my thumb a little more with this one, with this four string stuff. So here's all the D chords. You got, oh, this is the three string version. 002, 234, 457. How do you do that in four string? Well, you apply the formula and you end up with 0002, 2324, 4547. Now, if I move the melody string closest to my belly around as I play through those three. things you get and I guess the harp scales that's some of it um, let me show you a couple other tricks I like this chord shape right here I love I always think of the Hobbit cartoon because it, I think it had some of these types of chords in it I'm gonna play a one one two three a one one two three listen to this Gandalf. 
<laughs> you know, Bilbo. That's for a minor L shape. If you if you do this to a major L shape, like the three three four five, that sounds like Disney. You know, when you're waking up and the sun is and you're in love and it's whoa, it's so wonderful. And then all of a sudden, you, <laughs> right? There's some lovely chords because when whenever you take a chord and you make two of the notes of it be just one half or whole step away from each other. You get this nice rub, which is pretty cool. Um, or, um, very contemporary sounding, really gorgeous sounds. Um, one David would do is he would make these little triangle looking things, leave the bass string open, and then on the middle and the two melodies, like check this out, I'm gonna leave the bass string open and then starting on the middle, I'm gonna do a five, four, five. Looks like a little triangle that's pointing to the left. So I'm just gonna move this triangle around. a beautiful sound and you can like this uh, five four five you can make it a five three five listen to that Look up David Schnaufer's Morning Birds on the Dulcimer Claire Deluxe CD. I think it opens up the CD. It's really nice. And so that, that brings us to the fact that he was capoing at four uh, a lot, you know? Like, what, I don't know, why, why didn't he, I think I asked him once, why didn't, why didn't you do more open or capo one? I think he said he didn't know. Um, he does Jesu Joy capo to three. I mean, if you really want to delve into Schnaufer and you want to check out his figure picking, you got to check out the four string stuff. Um, the, here comes the sun. I mean, that's just magic, right? Um, I think he might have also done Beautiful Dreamer Capo 3. And it's a, uh, I could, could be wrong. Yeah, that's beautiful. Really cool stuff. I love the Jesu Joy. Um, uh, studied it enough but that's a good one man um but the capo four you know what it's a great way you know in a concert to change things up you know you've been giving everybody everything in the key of d It's 
just great. Um, the last thing I guess I'll show you today is Last thing is the, it's just avoiding the bass string completely. Now there's something sweet about this because you know the bass string is a little noisy, which is all right. You know you can learn to play cleaner and you can get used to the noise. You can get flat wound strings, although I don't do that. Um, but if you get rid of the bass string just completely, you get this wonderful high light sound. And because these are not wound, you hear no scratchy scratchy when you are sliding around. So um, check this stuff out. No bass. What's interesting about this is you can reference your three main three string chord shapes to get you through this um, and while it doesn't produce exactly the same results if you really do the homework on it it gets you there it's really kind of neat so uh, like a three three five the L shapes actually work out it's a different inversion and I won't go into what that means but the point is it works, so you can just move, you can just move these L's around. It's pretty cool. Um, so what about the other two shapes? We'll check this out. Imagine a three, four, five. Now that might be pretty, but it's not going to give you a triad. It's not going to give you a major chord right now or a minor chord. You get this, which is cool, <laughs> right? But if you want to make the, if you want to reference the slant to get a cool major or minor chord here, you just swap the, you swap the middle and the inside melody string. So remember, I'm not using the bass at all, okay? So I've just got this three string approach. So I'm gonna not even reference the bass. Starting on the middle string, I've got a three, four, five, I'm referencing in my mind, just swap the middle and the inside melody. So the three, four, five becomes a four, three, five. And actually that gives us a minor chord. So the three, three, five works. The four, three, five is really just the slant where you swap these two. And you can do the same thing for an extended slant. Like think of a one, two, four, just swap the middle and inside melody. So the one, two, four becomes a two, one, four. All right, so what's interesting here is if you wanna play through these suckers, thinking shapes not going into the theory of it if you pretend the middle and the two melody strings are the only strings you got avoid the bass think of your three shapes that you normally would play for D you get an 002 234 457 and then play those but just swap the middle and inside melody Now, why did I go to the trouble to explain all that? It's because if you know your shapes well on three-string dulcimer, all you got to do is reference that stuff and flip them. Now, this here, this is a D chord. You're just getting different inversions. Um, so listen, when you just play on those three strings only, it's this really clean, beautiful, pure sound.
then bring the bass back in. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, I need to, uh, I think I need to continue my journey with four string. And I will be uh, working on this stuff over at Mountain Dulcimer, A to Z dot com. Uh, so if you're interested in my take on it, that's where you can learn more. But certainly you should check out this. There's so many other good dulcimer players that have done four string. And I want you to start assembling a list for yourself. But um, man, I mentioned some names at the beginning. I know I'm missing people. Start building your list now, and um, I'm going to do a little silent night to wrap this up. Thanks for watching.